Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you folks in your great country. Now, you have to understand, I speak Southern. So uh, if you have to have a translator, I, uh, to my help you understand exactly what I'm saying, but I believe you'll be able to understand most of it. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Fred and Linda Hartice and Jerry and Polly Hartice are some of the dearest people in all of the world. I've had opportunity to work with their organizations several times, and it's a thrill to get to be here with you folks. We need to be good communicators. That's one of the most important things that all of us can do, can communicate well with our spouses, with our children, with our upline, with our downline those that we're involved in. How many of you really would like to be a better communicator? Can I see your hands? Well, that's great. That's all of us. Let me, I don't know if you heard the story or not of a school superintendent, and I understand over here it would probably be equivalent to your uh, chief education officer, but a school superintendent met with his assistant superintendent, and he gave him this information. He said, next Thursday at 10.30 a.m., Haley's Comet will appear over this area. This is an event which occurs only once every 75 years. Call the school principals and have them assemble their teachers and classes on their athletic field and explain this phenomena to them. If it rains, cancel the day's activities and have the classes meet in the auditorium to see a film about the comet. That's what the superintendent said to the assistant superintendent who was supposed to pass that message along word for word to the school principals. Here's what the school principals heard from the assistant superintendent. By order of the superintendent of schools, next Thursday at 10.30 a.m., Haley's Comet will appear over your school athletic field. <laughs> if it rains, cancel the day's classes and report to the auditorium with your teachers and students where you'll be shown films, a phenomenal event which occurs only once every 75 years. <laughs> well, the principals were supposed to pass that message along word for word to their teachers. Here's what the teachers heard. By order of the phenomenal superintendent of schools, <laughs> at 10.30 a.m. next Thursday, Haley's Comet will appear in your school auditorium. <laughs> in case of rain on the athletic field, the superintendent will give another order, something which occurs only once every 75 years. <laughs> well, the teachers are supposed to pass that message along word for word to the students. Here's what the students heard. Next Thursday at 10.30 a.m., the superintendent of schools will appear in our school auditorium with Haley's Comet something which occurs only once every 75 years. If it rains, the superintendent of schools will cancel the comet and have us all meet on our phenomenal athletic field. <laughs> well, the students are supposed to take that message home and give it to their parents. And many of us who are parents have been on the receiving end of messages that we wondered what it was supposed to be originally. Here's what the parents heard. When it rains next Thursday at 10.30 a.m. over the school athletic field, the phenomenal 75-year-old superintendent of schools will cancel all classes and will appear before the whole school in the auditorium accompanied by Bill Haley in the comments. <laughs> I, I'm just wondering, how many of you ever got a message from your children and you wondered what the real message was supposed to be? Can I just see your hands? That's great. Listen, I got married in 1970. By 1985, we had four children. I was looking at my wife and my children the same way you were looking at that number sheet the first time. <laughs> it made no sense to me. I remember I read one time when Winston Churchill said, we'll fight on the air, we'll fight in the streets, we'll fight on the beaches, we'll fight at sea. It sounded like our family vacation. And I just didn't understand. Then in 1985, somebody showed me a way how to read the patterns of people. And when I began to understand how to read the patterns of people, just like you did on the second go-round, I began to be less frustrated, less stressed out, much more productive, and everything began to make sense. That's what we're going to do today is to teach you for a little while how to build your relationships with others, build your team, upline, downline, children, whoever you're working with, to build better teams and have better relationships. Does that sound like a good deal? All right, turn the page, or open up the page, I should say. Open up the page to the middle, and let's take a look. Notice, first of all, you will see at the top of the page the word outgoing. The word outgoing. And at the bottom of the page, you'll see the word reserved. Okay, those big letters, words at the very top of the page. Outgoing at the top, reserved at the bottom. Now, everybody look up here. If I were to come to you and I were to ask you, do you feel like you're more outgoing or are you more reserved? 
Outgoing people like to go and do, and they like to be in charge, they like to take off. You know, their favorite word is the word go. Someone can call them on the phone and say, hey, do you want to go to the... They don't even need to hear the rest of the sentence. They've heard the magic word. They like to go. One of my daughters told me her dream vacation would be eight malls in three days. You know, she likes to shop. One of my daughters said, Dad, I know God wants us to do more shopping. I said, how do you know that? She said, because when the astronauts were on the moon and they looked back at the earth, the only thing they could see was the Great Mall in China. <laughs> Some of you won't get that till you're on your way home. You know, oh. <clears throat> so outgoing people like to go, reserve people, they don't, they don't have to go so much, they just enjoy staying where they are. Now, I know you're sitting there saying, well, I feel like I have some of both of those in me. That's right, you do. And you're not locked in for life. You can change your mind later on if you want to. And it may be 51% and 49%. But if I were to come to you and say, if you had to choose right now between those two, how many of you would be willing to raise your hand and say, I think I'm more outgoing? Let me see your hands. Raise your hands up, okay? How many of you would say, I feel like I'm a little more reserved? Can I see your hands? Now, if you're looking around, you see it's about half and half. What interests me, though, is the way you raise your hands. Those who are active and outgoing go, Those who are more passive and reserved, they raise their hands like this. <laughs> now, what you're going to see today about 95% of everything we do in our lives, we do because of our personality. It's the way we're wired inside. And we're not even aware of it. I was 32 years old before I really understood myself. When I was growing up, people said, you need to find yourself. You need to discover yourself. You need to get into your head and know who you are. My problem was I found me and discovered I'm not my type. <laughs> so maybe you face that same problem. Okay. So some people are more active and outgoing, others a little more passive or reserved. One's not right or wrong, one's not good or bad, they're just simply different. Now, if I were to come to you the second question and ask you this, do you feel like you're more, if you look on your sheet on the left side, it says task oriented, on the right side it says people oriented. If I were to come to you and say, do you feel like you're more task oriented or are you more people oriented? Task-oriented types enjoy doing things. Make a list, check it off, get some things done. People-oriented individuals, they just like to socialize and visit and laugh and talk. You know, they don't go to school to learn anything, they just go to see their friends. And they like to have a lot of fun and they just visit with everybody they know. But those who are more task-oriented, they, they, like, they just make them feel uncomfortable unless they're getting some things accomplished. They, they like to have things in order. They, they like to see results, make a list, number it, check it off. They like to make them feel good inside. Those who are people-oriented, they had a list, but they lost it. And uh, <laughs> they'll, they'll find it. You know, they, they love everybody. They're just the life of the party. They like to have a good time. Now, if I were to come to you and ask, which one of those do you feel like you're the most? Now, I know you're sitting here saying, well, I have some of both of that inside of me. That's right, you do. And it may be 51% and 49%. And you're not locked in for life. You can change your mind later on if you'd like to. But just for right now, just for today, if I were to come to you and say, how many of you do feel like you're a little more task-oriented? Can I see your hands? Raise them up. All right, how many of you feel like you're more people-oriented? Can I see your hands? I always like the way that happens because those who are task oriented, you know, they're very up and down. Those who are people oriented, most of the time they raise their hand like this. Yeah! <laughs> you know, their mouth and their hands connected, you know. <laughs> now, one's not right or wrong, one's not good or bad. They're just different. Now, listen carefully. This is what's so much fun. As you think about this, I've only asked you two questions. And neither one of the questions were offensive. Neither one of the questions were hard to figure out. I mean, for the most part, for those two questions, based on your answer, I now can tell you your whole life story. Pretty much can tell you your life history. And the purpose of this, listen carefully, this is not to label. This is not to categorize. I'm not trying to put you in a box. But it's to understand where to start when you're working with the person. 
So now here's what I want you to do. I want everybody to take their finger just like this. Everybody hold your finger up. Here we go. Everybody with me. And look in the middle of your page. Look in the middle of your page. And now look back up here. All right, you got your finger ready. If you said you're more outgoing, I want you to put your finger in the top half of the middle of the page. If you said you're more reserved, put your finger in the bottom half of the middle of the page, in your circle there, okay? Then, if you said you're more task-oriented, move it to the left. If you said you're more people-oriented, move it to the right. I'll do mine, you do yours. Okay, I feel like I'm a little more outgoing, so my finger went in the top half of the circle. And then I feel like I'm a little more people-oriented, a little more outgoing and a little more people-oriented, so I moved it to the right. And if you'll notice, there are four letters in the middle of the box. The D, the I, the S, and the C. The D is the dogmatic, domineering, driving, demanding, determined, decisive, doer. We'll come back to those in just a minute. They're the ones, if, if you have your finger in that box, a lot of you are sitting here with the attitude of, hurry up, let's get some things going around here. I'm ready to go, I understand this, I know where you're headed, come on, move! If you hang around these people very long, big red splotches will break out on your neck. If your finger is in the eye box, you're sitting here right now thinking, it's party time! I'm having so much fun. This is great. If you're sitting beside one of these people, it might be a good idea to move. Because, because they have a hard time listening. And they wiggle a lot, too. If your finger is in the S quadrant, the S stands for the sweet, soft, stable, steady, shy, status quo individual. They're just happy to be here. As a matter of fact, if your finger's in that box, you're probably right now sitting there thinking, is he going to call on me for anything? <laughs> I, I, I don't want to be called on for anything. I, I, I like being here and, and everything, but I, I don't want to be called on. I, <clears throat> I, I bet if I sit real still, he won't see me. <laughs> now, if your finger is in the C box or the C quadrant, C stands for, we're going to come back to these words in a minute, the cautious, calculating, concerned, critical thinking, cognitive, correct. These are the ones that proofread Xerox copies. <laughs> as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, if you, didn't, if you didn't raise your hand anywhere, just for now, go ahead and put it in this box, okay? <laughs> because the C's are sitting here thinking, well, I, I could have raised my hand at a different place, and I, 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 felt, I, I, felt, I felt like he rushed me too fast. And I, 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 are we getting ready to be evaluated or something? I, I don't understand this. And, and of course, the D's are still sitting here thinking, just go, I'm ready. <laughs> and the I's are thinking, this is great. <laughs> I understand, I understand. And the S's, I ain't moving. <laughs> and of course, the C's, I, I'm just still not sure. I, I think I chose, but. Now, you know why we're laughing? We're laughing because we're laughing at us. It's amazing when you begin to see this, you think, this is incredible in how simple it is. When I'm prospecting someone or when I'm talking to someone or counseling someone, I begin to ask myself two questions. Don't write them down. You will have opportunity in a little while. The first question I ask myself, does this person seem to be more outgoing or does this person seem to be more reserved? And that gives me an opportunity to know where they're coming from. Then the second question I ask is, does this person seem to be more task-oriented or is this person more people-oriented? And if I can't figure it out, I'm not afraid to ask because it's not an offensive question. I may be saying, now, what kind of job do you have? Tell me about your family. Do you have any children? Do you feel like you're more outgoing or are you more reserved? And it gives me an opportunity, listen, not to put them in a category, not to categorize them, not to label them. Labeling can become disabling. But it gives me an opportunity to begin to understand them, where they're coming from. And then we can begin to build a relationship. 